Wave energy is a huge resource in the U.S., with an estimated annual potential of 1,400 terawatt hours per year. This is equivalent to 34% of currently existing U.S. electricity generation. The state of Alaska alone accounts for 62% of this potential resource. Yet despite this immense opportunity, industry has thus far failed to produce a commercially viable technology for wave energy conversion. Over the last several decades, hundreds of systems have been designed and tested. These technologies tend to fall under six main design categories. All of the existing designs currently under development are theoretically reliable power generators under laboratory wave tank conditions. However, the actual ocean environment presents some major challenges to reliability, as well as to survivability, maintainability, and cost effectiveness. For the reality of the ocean, particularly in Alaska and other northern areas of the U.S., is a reality of occasional extreme storms with winds over 100 miles per hour and 50-foot seas. The crushing forces from surf on breakwater exposed areas, ice buildup on system surfaces in winter months, as well as the corrosive nature of seawater and marine vegetation on everything. Of course, technologies fully beneath the ocean surface are spared for many of these storm-related problems, yet the trade-off is significantly increased difficulty in deployment and maintenance versus surface technologies. Ray Wadsworth, the principal of Kodiak Marine Construction, is an Alaskan sea captain and commercial fishing vessel builder with over 50 years of experience. He has designed a unique new vessel that marries the practical survivability, ease of use, and maintainability features of a modern commercial Alaskan fishing boat with a novel attenuator-type wave energy conversion system. The design is a 120-foot-long, wide-stance pontoon vessel with a bridgework connecting the two pontoons that is 16 feet above the waterline. All quarters and equipment are housed atop this bridgework. The vessel is to be anchored and pointed into the waves, and those waves passing between the two pontoons act upon two free-hanging hinged arms with flotation at their endpoints. The torque of these arm movements drives double-action hydraulic pumps, and the hydraulics then turn electrical generators. Our design calculations indicate up to 600 gallons per minute of hydraulic volume, stabilized by pressure accumulators, which should produce 400 kilowatts of electrical energy. One major highlight is a theoretically greater wave height travel and torque generation than existing designs, due to the attenuator arms having a stable platform, the long pontoon vessel, to move against. In contrast, the closest similar attenuator systems typically use a chain of floating structures connected with hinges that attempt to capture movement via the difference between wave peaks and valleys as they move the chain links in relation to each other. Not only is this sort of design less efficient in terms of torque, but it also has the issue that the front end of the chain arrangement deflects waves to its sides like the bow of a ship breaking wake, thereby wasting much potential. Our system more effectively captures the wave movement. It will also likely even amplify wave heights slightly as the waves broken by the pontoons create wake into the space between. By forcing the waves between the pontoons and forcing the waves to raise a series of floating lever arms before exiting at the rear, the majority of wave height kinetic energy will have been absorbed. This means that the waves exiting the vessel will have been greatly diminished. It follows that connecting multiple such vessels together, side by side, would create a floating breakwater system that also doubles as a large wave energy converter. In terms of survivability in the destructive marine environment, the vessel will be patterned and structured after standard marine steel vessel construction methods. Additionally, and of high importance for survivability, it will be fitted with a simple engine propulsion system in order that its operator can easily drive it into harbor prior to really major storms, an ability which no other known design has. The quarters atop the bridge are constructed so as to deflect waves in heavy seas. These containers house all the hydraulic, electrical, and mechanical systems, as well as Spartan living conditions. By placing all component systems in easily accessible quarters, the accessibility and maintainability is greatly enhanced, again, similar to standard shipbuilding practice. Maintenance is also made easier than other designs because the vessel can easily be unanchored and driven into a typical shipyard for haul-out. All other known designs require either maintenance fully at sea, costly at sea haul out from submerged locations, or towing. 
One major issue facing rural communities in Alaska is the difficulty and high cost of electrical energy. Heating oil and diesel generator oil prices to remote areas are so high, people who have lived in these communities for generations are being forced to move. This is devastating to the younger generations who often find it difficult to cope with life in the city environment. Fish processing companies struggle with extremely high overhead costs. Fishing vessel operators have nothing left to pay crew after the fuel bill is paid. Many of the remote locations have no real electrical grid to tie into. Our new vessel design provides a whole new, potentially independently owned industry. Entrepreneurs, even local utility companies, could create energy for local consumption without shipping in diesel fuel or drilling for oil wells. Proliferation in the development of these systems would increase the energy security of local communities, as well as that of the United States.